Greetings YouTube. Today we're looking at Blood and Guts, A Short History of Medicine by Roy Porter. Uh, and this is exactly what it says. It's a short history covering quite a broad uh, selection of topics all related to medical history. Um, the chapters are disease, doctors, the body, the laboratory, therapies, surgery, the hospital, and medicine in modern society, uh, along with a further reading and an index. Um, it has a list of illustrations, acknowledgments, and a preface. So it's a, it's a, and it's a uh, fairly comprehensive um, book. I, I really quite enjoyed myself. Now, what was fun is the guy really does have a, kind of a sponge-like brain, and it goes in a quite a few different directions. So you, you, and so you get to explore each topic in a fair amount of depth but not to the point where it's going to make a lot of people feel that oh, okay let's this topic needs to be over because he moves around quite a bit so it, it really does kind of keep you going now i don't mind going really deep on a single topic but i understand that your average person doesn't necessarily want that they may not necessarily be interested a whole lot in a chapter devoted deeply to disease i've read entire Books that dealt nothing with dealt with nothing but disease research because that's the pedant that I am, um, and how our view of disease has changed over time um, from the earliest eras of like the Greeks and the Romans and the pre-written era and how it's adapted and changed over time. How Gal Galen or Galen I think it was Galen I pronounced it Galen it's Roman I think and he had a huge footprint on medicine for centuries when it would have been better off if people had just done some actual friggin research um how people's thoughts and about the sacred nature of bodies kept them from doing autopsies so a lot of the times they were theory theorizing how bodies work if they had just cut some of them open they would have found out and saved themselves a whole lot of misery but they didn't because of social norms saying you shouldn't be doing this um how doctors changed over time um, and how they eventually took over parts of medicine that had traditionally been controlled by women, midwives and things like that. Um, until eventually it got to the point where men were in charge of um, women giving birth. And they required them to come to hospitals. Of course, that's, that's changed now in, in many ways, but not completely. Still, there are many times when doctors, male doctors, override mother's desires because they know best. You're never going to have a baby, dude. I question whether you know best. Um, talking about how we view the body over time, how that's changed, and our old total understanding of it. Um, how the laboratory started out and eventually became the uber-specialized, complex, arcane, bureaucratic, maybe it's gone too far in some ways, kind of a thing it is today. Um, how therapies have changed from doctors at one time basically being able to pat people on the hands and saying, hope it gets better, <laughs> till eventually there being treatments that had some real effect on the illnesses that people had, like the early sulfa drugs, the early vaccinations that came that were created. Um, as, a, as a side note, um, one of the people that were survived, first, the first boy ever that was ever cured of rabies eventually became a security guard at the Pasteur Institute. And when the Nazis rolled in to Paris, he locked all the doors and then he killed himself. Now they eventually broke in. But he did his effort to keep them out, honoring the memory of the man that had saved him as a child. It always breaks my heart. Um, the, the book goes into surgery, how surgery changed over time um, and how horrible it was prior to any kind of uh, anesthesia that we had because it was done live. So lots of surgeries weren't done, even though people had to kind of an idea. We could probably do this, but we have to cut into the dude or the woman while they're awake, you know, so. We don't really have the time to do this, nor did they have the ability to do certain surgeries that like were operating on the heart or the brain because they thought that was outside the scope of human, human capacity because they didn't have the drugs and the support structure to keep a person alive to allow them to do that beyond the whole pain aspect. They just couldn't keep someone alive to work on their heart. 
um, talking about how hospitals change, how they originally there they were very much branches of uh, uh, holy orders and things like that, and very little support from the state, mostly funded by donations and things like that, and how we changed over time to have more a more cohesive, interrelated system, but it's still not perfectly smooth. And in America, we still have a system that says, well, for the most part, if you don't have enough money, you die. We still don't have universal single payer in America, and we still allow people to be without insurance and to die simply because we don't care. And that's the horror of it. That's the reality of it. We don't care. So we don't do anything. Um, it does, it was very angering, but talking about how the American Medical Association um, fought against universal single payer health care because it would cut into their profits. They fought against veterans' hospitals. The AMA has been on the wrong side of history a lot, and I think they should be held accountable for that. That's just me. So all in all, if you're looking for a book that really covers the whole breadth of medical history, but not too deep, but it may give you a taste and tell you that help you figure out that if you want to go deeper, the reference books at the back, and you can go you know a particular topic that that interests you and pursue it. It's not it's not a huge book. It's not hard to read. It's not over overly large. Um, so I really do recommend this book. I can't remember where I picked it up. Uh, it was at a I think it was at a thrift shop. I really like the cover because you got like these like two porcelain figures. Uh, of the human anatomy and they're kind of sort of accurate in a very broad way um and i kind of I may, it makes me smile that the, they 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 put not they put the v, fetus inside a woman and the figure had a little pillow under her head isn't that nice the woman gets a little pillow <laughs> but it's a good book thoroughly enjoyable um and i recommend it